All right, welcome to Truck Vlog 19. I promised this vlog to you guys around five weeks ago on Facebook. Uh, it's a coast to coast vlog from Brisbane to Perth. It's the it's the first direct trip that I ever did. Um, it was a good trip until it wasn't, as you can tell by the title of this video. Me and another driver basically got done pretty dirty by the bloke that we were working for. He went out of business while we were in Perth, and I'm gonna use the intro to this video to tell that story. Roll the intro. <laughs> All right, so this isn't a very long story, but I'm gonna try and be as thorough as I can be with this so you guys get the full picture. So three weeks on a Sunday before Christmas, I left uh, I left home on a Sunday in that red SAR working for that small company, and you know, I was given a job to do. Um, go direct to Perth, usually we go to Adelaide and all that, kick off some freight reload, and then go to Perth, but like this time it was just go straight to Perth, so I was like, sweet, off to Perth I go. So, the Sunday morning, I picked up my A trailer in Brisbane, went out to Gatton, which this, which you guys will see this on the vlog. Um, went out to Gatton to get my B trailer, and then literally just pointed my nose west, went as hard and as fast as I could uh, towards Perth. It like for the most part, the run was pretty normal until, like I said, it wasn't right. So. The first day I went from Brisbane to Gaddon and then to Cobar. Sorry, I filled up and and I filled up in Gundawindi at the mobile. Usually we fuel up in Walgett, but I figured I had a light B double. I can just wait till I get to Yunta, which is in South Australia. Um, well, about three and a half hours out of Adelaide. Uh, that's that's where you guys saw me fuel up when I was towing that triple from Adelaide to Brisbane. Yunta is kind of where this 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 whole story of getting done dirty by the bloke I was getting done dirty by the bloke I was working for kind of starts. First day was normal, got to Yanta, went to fuel up, but I thought, you know, I'll check on the fuel cards. But because because towards when I first started with that company, the fuel cards used to run out maybe once every two or three weeks. But in the last kind of month of working there, before they shut down, the fuel cards were running out once a week, right, with being kind of green to the industry, right, um, only having worked with one other company, which was a big company, before I went to that small company, I I didn't, I knew, my instinct was telling me that, that things were going downhill for old mate, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to bail out because I was making like stupid money, like mining money, and I've told heaps of people that, that I was making mining money, so I didn't want to just jump ship. Anyway, got to Yanta, called him, nah, fuel cards, I'm trying to get an extension on the account. So all right, I, I skipped, I told him I'll skip Yanta, I'll go over the ranges to Tin Man, which is another mobile, which is, is like an hour and a half from Yanta. So anyway, I leave Yanta. And then after Yanta, I'm on the phone to the other driver. And the other driver is, is an older bloke, He's older than me, so he's got more experience with smaller companies, all that kind of stuff. He is also going to Perth, but he went to Adelaide first, so he left the day before me, and we were kind of at the same point in the trip towards Perth, right? So we're on the phone, he goes, he's telling me I'm in Adelaide, I'm just waiting for him to um, let us know about the cards and whatnot, and then I'll and then I'll start heading towards him, and I said, sweet, right? And then with his experience with smaller companies, he's telling me, look, this is a textbook shutdown, this is a textbook going out of business right and and then he had left for a while and then come back to the company i was working for and I, he said how long have these cards been running out um been running out regularly i said oh, maybe a couple months i was basically since we lost since we lost this work that we were doing from Mackay into sydney i don't know what happened somewhere there but the cards just we're just talking about the fuel cards. The fuel cards just weren't the same after that. Our instincts are good enough to know, right, that this is a shutdown. I knew it um, without kind of knowing it, and he knew it. So he, we were just laughing about it. We were joking. And one of the things we said was, I'll bring everything full circle at the end, but one of the things we said was, bro, if, if old mate shuts down while we're in Perth, because I had that SAR, old mate had a K200 with the big square fuel tank, so he had like 300 litres more fuel than I did. So we literally talked about, like, bro, if he shuts down while we're in Perth, we're going to have to throw all of our gear into that K200 and then two up back home, <laughs> which is which is what ended up happening, but I'll get to that. Anyway, we're laughing, and I said, you know, I've got to go talk to the missus. So I called Mrs. Cross, my wife, and 
saying the same thing to him. Me and her have kind of a different conversation, right? My exact words to my wife were, I'm pretty sure I'm on a sinking ship. I don't want to be on it when it sinks. I want to have another job. Two important conversations. Very important conversations. I don't know if the guy I was working for knew it was coming. I'm pretty sure he did, even though even though the last time I spoke to him on the phone, you know, it wasn't a very good conversation. It wasn't a very civil conversation, that's for sure. But he, he I told him, mate, come on, like you saw it coming just like I did, and he just went off his head like, no, they whatever. Finance got pulled, what ifs, things like that. He reckons it happened overnight. I told him you're full of shit. It's all negligence, mate. I want my money, right? Because he owes me a bag of money. Um, he owes not just me, he owes however many other drivers bags of money too. And I, I literally messaged him as soon as we got the word, as soon as the operations guy, because there was only two of them, as soon as the operations guy called me and said, mate, we're out of business, blah, blah, I messaged the big, I messaged the owner straight away and said, sorry to hear, mate, it was good, it was good working for you, because it was. He wasn't a bad boss, definitely not a great person, but the money made up for all of it, right? I was, I was away for two and a half weeks my first time out. You know, I would never come home un like in the same week that I left. But the money made up for all of it. That's why I stuck it out and it ended up biting us in the ass big time. So I carry on with the trip and just point my nose west, go to Perth, right? And it's but and like after we got the money back on the fuel card, it's a normal trip. So I get to Perth and this is like the whole of the story, right? Get to Perth Wednesday afternoon, which you'll see in the vlog. Go to Qdale, have a nap wake up i can't do my literally my first my first delivery i've got meat for i've got meat for o'connor like o'connor's a suburb i've got meat for o'connor in my a trailer and then bananas for the markets in my b trailer and like my first one was at 5 30 in the morning bananas can go straight into the markets anywhere from whatever time over there so wake up thursday morning ready to go right ready to get my deliveries done turn and burn and piss straight back off east 5.30, a trailer gets done, and I'm at the markets by 7, I think. 7, now the next the next sign that things weren't going well, sorry, back backtrack, backtrack. The next sign that things weren't going well after um, the fuel cards with the hunter and everything is I called the operations guy um, on my way to Perth, because usually he's like on top of it. I've got time slots for the next day. Uh, he's talking to the customers, then talking to me, right? Because he's because he's pretty good at doing what he does. Call him. Hey, why haven't you sent me a time slot for O'Connor in the morning? Sorry, man, I forgot. I'll get onto them. I was like, Phew. I was like looking at the phone, like you forgot. Like, did you forget that I was? Did you forget that I was going to Perth? Like, come on, man. He messaged me back later that night. Yeah, you got five thirty. Cool. Next one, right? Is I'm at the market seven in the morning. Finish. Ugh, I open the B trailer, right? Don't do my A trailer. Go back to QDL, unhook from there, hook onto my B, go to the markets. I get to the markets, unlock the padlock, open the trailer, and the on the passenger side, the pallet that's right at the back of the trailer is wrecked from water damage because it was raining most of the way across. I'm looking at the customer going, sorry man, uh, I'll call the boss, whatever. Um, and again, took a photo of the pallet, took a photo of the roof, of the, the corner above where that pallet was sitting, and told message the operations guy on WhatsApp. This pallet of bananas are being wrecked because of that, um, because of the whatever the fiberglass and the roof being crap and raining all the way across. No reply. And usually, like he reply to you in the middle of the night. And then again, I'm going, what the hell is going on here? I kicked all the bananas off. Go straight back to the Qdale pads and get back there. And this is like the meat of the story, right? Get back to Qdale. <laughs> Hook onto my A, a trailer. I literally hook onto my A trailer, reverse under my B trailer, phone call, right? And I'm looking at it. I looked at it for like 10 seconds before I answered the phone. And like I was looking at it, and my brain just went, What's going on here? I answered it, hello. And the bloke, I knew something was wrong because every time something was wrong, this operations bloke would call you. And it's like he lost his spine and would talk to you like a sad child, like, oh, hey, mate, right? And that's, he's a good bloke, but, like, that's the truth. Everyone everyone who's dealt with him would know. Yeah, oh, hey, mate, oh, sorry to, hear, sorry to tell you, we went out of business last night for so-and-so reason. And I'm sitting there going, holy shit. Like, I just zoned out. All I could hear was, 
<laughs> all I heard from him talking was, we went out of business, you're not getting paid, there's no money on the fuel cards, that SAR has to be dropped off to another mob to get it back to Adelaide. Um, you're stuffed, right? So that's obviously not what the actual conversation was. When I when I started listening to him speaking again in his you know childish whatever, when I started listening to him speaking again, he, like we 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 just started talking, right? And I didn't I wasn't mad at him. I've never been mad at him for the owner shutting down because he wasn't the owner. He was just the he was the number two, right? He was just the the foot soldier for the owner. And he he was saying things like you know I haven't been paid for two weeks. Yeah, he was saying things like I didn't get paid last week. And I'm not getting paid again this week. And in my head, I'm going, well, if you didn't get paid last week, and you knew this was coming, why don't you? Te- why don't you tell us? Did you just want us to come to Perth and get stranded, kind of thing? And that kind of contradicts what the argument that I had with the owner was. Was the owner said, no, it happened overnight. They pulled the rug out from underneath us. You know, our financing pulled the rug out from underneath us. Um, we didn't know it was coming when his operations guys on the other hand is is going on the day that they told us that they shut down i didn't take a paycheck last week um sorry mate you know we didn't really see it coming but hold on maybe you just told me you saw it coming because you didn't take a paycheck last week <laughs> whatever obviously a couple of spineless mongs but uh <laughs> oh it's pretty clear that I, I don't even though the the second in charge is a good bloke He's a family bloke like myself, and the owner. They're not good. Oh, they're they're not bad people at heart. I just don't like them. I don't like them because they dogged. We we've all got kids. Like literally, I knew most of the drivers. We've all got kids and families to support, and they just let us go do our jobs and then shut us down. Like blokes got stuck in Emerald. Um, some bloke was on WhatsApp because we had a big group chat saying like I can't even afford food for my kids. Um, I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'd love to help you, but I can't afford food. For, well, I couldn't afford food for my kids as well. We actually got by pretty well. Uh, and he, like, you know, he, the one thing that I do like about old mate is that he, not the owner, like the owner didn't message anybody. Like I said, spineless. The one thing about the operations guy, he said, you know, I'll pay for a flight home out of my own pocket, which I said, no, like, come on, man. You you got to go get a job just like I do. You you don't get to fall back on whatever money's left in the accounts. Like, come on, man, don't worry about it. I said, look, if, if I get desperate, I'll call you to get that ticket off you. But there, there's more of a chance that I'm going to be driving in another truck, working from Perth or another city, right? Which is what ended up happening. And I said to him, the other driver, did you tell him? He goes, no, he's doing his deliveries. And I knew that they were waiting for him to finish his deliveries before they called him. So I, I, got, I hung up the phone, got straight on the phone, bro, what? Guess what? Uh, and he goes, and he knew straight away. And I said, what are you doing now? He's going, I'm going to do my last delivery. I said, don't, just come back to the pads, man. He's out of business. Old mate's going off his head because he's just come back from working for another company who was paying him good money but he come back because the money that we were making was better especially going to perth and neither of us know whether we want to laugh or cry laugh because we predicted it and cry because we're stuck in perth right he kind of like had to have a bit of time by himself um he actually went and done his last delivery he's like look it's not it's not the customer's fault that we got stuck here i'll just go do the delivery i'll come back and we'll chat about what we do so he, he pisses off does his delivery <laughs> And I'm sitting there, I'm talking to my wife. And, you know, she starts crying and things like that. Like, it's three weeks before Christmas. I'm out of a job and we've got to get home from Perth. I, I knew, like, I'm a pretty good problem solver. Um, and I'm a, I'm a natural at it too. I knew that, one, I was going to get paid one way or another going to get home. Two, we were going to come out the other side of that whole situation pretty good. And that's, like, we've it all worked out, right? My first thought is, all right, there's plenty of... There's plenty of mobs that do Brisbane to Perth. I'm going to see if any of them will give me a job from Perth based in Brisbane and just explain the situation with them. For GKR, they wanted me to get back to Brisbane. GKR is another mob that does, you know, Perth runs. Court SEQ, same thing. Court SEQ, same thing. We need you to get back to Toowoomba. All right, whatever. Blenders, same thing. And this is just so we could try and get paid to get from Perth home and then just like either keep working that job, 
uh, or go home and call them and say thanks for the ride, but whatever. So all the mobs are called, basically told us, you know, we need to get you, we need to get you back to Queensland, like get away back to Queensland, call us when you get here and we'll be happy to take you on. But we wanted to get paid, right, to go home. I'll call my mate, the other driver that's there, and I say, bro, I told, I told the other driver, bro, I'm pretty sure if I call, they'll give me my job back, and I'm pretty sure they'll give you a job. This is, like, I haven't talked to them since I left, right? I called my old boss, and I said, hey, mate, you want to hear a story? Told him exactly what I'm telling you, and he's going, holy shit, and he goes, so what, what, so what do you need? And I said, are you looking for any line haul drivers? He goes, where are you? And I said... Mate, we're stuck in Perth, like, but we've got a K200. It's got plenty of fuel in it. Um, if we got across, he he basically said, well, what's your plan? And I said, well, we're either going to drive back to Brisbane or if you want to put us on, we'll come to Melbourne. And he goes, hold on, I'll call you back. Right. Um, Ten minutes later, I'm in the shower. I get a call back. Long story short, um, a credit, and it's a credit, is they gave me my job back and another bloke a job um, over a 10 minute phone call. Um, and I'm, I'm still with them. My mate, he left, he basically, we went, we bobtailed to Melbourne and I'll, I'll, and I'll fill you in on what happened with the two upping, but I'm just talking about jumping back on. Um, we bobtailed, sorry, we took an empty A trailer to Melbourne, slept in the bunkhouse there. Monday afternoon, we're off in a couple of day cabs in the Brisbane. <laughs> like, and me and my wife are just going, holy crap, we dodged a bullet here. Well, we are lucky because old mate paid so well. Um, so we had money, right? We were lucky that we had money. Another way I got lucky was YouTube, right? I had money stashed to start the merch for the YouTube channel. Not going to happen anytime soon now. That, that bank account's empty. But it's just like our savings and the YouTube money and... And then like putting me back on just got us through Christmas. Like we didn't have to go, we didn't have to, did we have to cut? Did we go short anything for Christmas? No. We didn't get presents for Christmas. Yeah, the only thing we we skimped out on, on Christmas, for Christmas is we didn't get, she's sitting over here on the bed. We didn't get presents for each other and we didn't get presents for my father-in-law. Um, that oh, was yeah. it. I owe you, Robert. Yeah, got to rock. I owe you. Anyway, back to the story. So we're back in Perth. Um, I have the phone call. And then call old man. I go, bro, I've got your job. We need to go across to Melbourne. And he's and he's going, shit, really? Yeah, look. Come, to, come pick me up from the BP. We'll go drop this SAR off. And then we got permission from Packley's to drive that K200 from Perth to Melbourne. And we sit around and have a feed, right? We're just talking about it. We got lucky with a few things. Me in terms of me and old mate getting stuck together, right? One, he fueled. I used I used to fuel up on my way out of Perth instead of my way into Perth. He fueled up on his way in on the the night that he got there, right? So he had full fuel tanks. He had, he had only been doing local work um, for a couple of hours before before he before all this went down, and then we met back up at the BP and then took off, right? Fuel full fuel tanks. Two, we got lucky that we got stuck with each other. Um, we're both Kiwis, so naturally we both get along. And both of us had money. Like, when we, I realised how important that was to, like, having, like, a a good, like, working little ecosystem <laughs> in the truck, especially in such a desperate situation, is we both had money. So we could both afford food, grog, cigarettes, anything we needed on the way back without having to skimp off each other, right? Whereas if I got stuck with someone who spent all their money on the way to Perth expecting to get paid, that would have been a different story. Um, then I'm stuck with a bloke going, hold on, man, I've got to feed my family. Like, what do you, like, you know, um, I'll buy you food, but I need this money back, you know what I mean? So we basically left two B-doubles there, um, and we took one empty A-trailer. The empty A-trailer was for two things. To, I, I travel heavy, so all my gear was in that empty A-trailer wrapped in a tarp. Looked like we had a body in the back. And two spare parts like the trailer the at spare parts and spare fuel right so the trailer had a belly tank full of fuel i think it was like three quarters full we used that to get to melbourne spare parts like spare brake boosters tires brake like anything we had we had everything we needed with that empty a trailer to get our asses from perth all the way to melbourne right so 
we have a feed, and then at the end of it, I kind of look at him, I go, bro, let's go do it. And he's like, yeah, let's go, let's get up it. So I drove first out of the queued out BP. We just launch it, like empty A trailer, two of us, BFM two upping. Uh, I won't go into the rules with that because they're a big gray area, but like people who are actually doing it, you know, feel free to message me and explain the rules to that because in the logbook, BFM two up rules, they're like, they're, bl they're gray, they're blacked out. So you don't even know, we don't, we didn't know the rules, but we knew that if we just stuck to our normal working days, but shared the drive, we'd be all right, which is, which is fine. Uh, I drive back to, I drove up to Coolgardy, I think. Coolgardy, yeah, I drove up to Coolgardy. I got tired, I jumped in the bunk, old mate took over from Coolgardy, he drove to Cockabitty, right? And then Cockabitty, he goes, bro, I'm tired. I jumped up, he jumped in. I jumped in the seat, boom, gone again. We get to the border, stop, we pull over, have a cigarette, coffee, breakfast at the border. And I said, I've got a couple of hours left in me. And he goes, yeah, sweet. So I kept going for a couple of hours. I go, bro, I've, I'm, you know, I'm tired again. He goes, sweet, I'm up. And he then he does like the last three hours to Sejuna. <laughs> when I wake back up, you know, I'm all fresh eyed and bloody, just had a nap. I'm on my phone and then I've gone, I've looked over at him and gone, it was Thursday, right? I said, bro, we don't have to be in Melbourne until Sunday at the latest. Why don't we just stop in Sejuna, get a hotel room, go hit the bears for the night, and then just see what happens, right? So he goes, sweet, let's do it. We got to Sejuna. We're, we're like sitting there looking for a hotel room. He goes, I booked this one. Where? The big four. We've, uh, we'll, di we'll ditch the air trailer at the BP, and then we'll go, we'll bobtail over to the big four. I've got us a two-bedroom cabin, everything. Sweet, right? So we go to the big four, park the truck, have a shower, right? Put our number ones on. And they walked literally um, 500 meters to the pub. And then we spent, oh, I won't say how much money I spent because um, my wife's sitting behind me. But we spent the day and a shitload of money <laughs> at the pub on the horses, the pogies, the bears, right? The bourbons eventually. And we just had a good time. Like, we literally, what I said at the start is we didn't know whether we wanted to cry or laugh. And we actually said that to each other, like laughing on our way to Sejuna. We went and hit the bears. We go home to the um, cabin. I'll go to bed and then wake up in the morning. We kind of just lounge around and like, at that point, I'm like, come on, let's go. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah, we're not getting paid to do this. I don't want this to drag on. And then, so we got on the road and then literally we just two up all the way to Melbourne. That was Saturday. We got into Melbourne early, early Sunday morning. Yeah, we, we just we just carried on, right? Stopped in Port Augusta for a feed and then kind of went some back roads, ended up going in, going um, out towards Renmark and then Mildura Uyen, Uyen or something. We didn't want to go um, the Dukes Highway. I think it's the Dukes Highway. Like the normal way that you go from Adelaide to Melbourne, because that's a rough road the whole way across. We we're getting a bit low on fuel. I told him, you know, right, pull over. We'll just we bought a siphoning hose um, to to siphon out the belly tank of the fuel. I said, just pull over, bro. We'll just do it now while we're in the middle of nowhere, so people don't think that we're still in the trailer. Pulled over, then like suctioned, <laughs> had fun suctioning the bloody siphoning the belly tank out of the A trailer. Got back on the road. Sharing the driving still, and then eventually we, well, you know, we're sharing the driving. Eventually the fuel got that low that we had to turn the tap off for the the um, the driver's side tank because the the pickup is in the passenger side tank. We were pretty sure that we had drained all of the fuel out of the drive out of the driver's side tank. So we turned that tap off, and then we were basically uh, three hours from Melbourne. We're on E. And we're, we're both sitting there going, look, we spent too much money at the pub. Um, neither of us wanted to put money in, into the fuel tanks of this truck. But we ended up putting a um, 100 bucks in. I think it was a 100 bucks, like 50 bucks each kind of thing. And then that got us all the way into Melbourne. Like, when we got to Melbourne, um, oh, mate, he was tired as. I, I finished the last leg of Melbourne, like, the, f the last few hours. He was crashed out the whole time. We got into Melbourne. I just literally pulled into the driveway, er, yoinked all my gear out, 
And then I said, see ya, mate. Like, he was like, yeah, I'll come back later on in the afternoon. Uh, I'm tired. I'm going to go to BP, whatever. And then, you know, we returned the truck. It was... It was a bit of a shit experience. I don't want it to happen again. I don't want it to happen to anyone else. But, you know, that shit, shit happens, honestly. I have taken this long, literally the last five weeks, just stuck in my head trying to process what happened. I, I, I kind of do that when big things happen because the last thing I want to do is shove it all to the back and keep motoring, you know what I mean? Um, I wanted to just uh, just think about it and process it. It took me five weeks and then yesterday I literally told myself stop being, <laughs> stop being a sook and edit this last vlog, which is what I've just done. Um, anyway, on to the vlog. I've missed uploading content. It feels good to be talking to a camera again um, and talking to you guys again. I will apologize for one thing, this vlog doesn't have an outro. I was going to outro it the morning, like Thursday morning after my deliveries. Uh, I was going to make a quick like, outro of just doing deliveries and everything. But then, you know, things went south. I literally put my camera in a sock to keep it <laughs> from getting scratched because I knew it was going to sit in my bag for a couple months. And then I, this is the first time I've picked this camera up since Perth. I hope you guys enjoy the vlog. Talk to you soon. all over the bloody camera. All right, so I'm in Gaddon. This trip is big red. Now, this trip is about as creamy as um, as cream gets, honestly. I've got a B-double. Um, my A trailer was preloaded for me. I think it's got meat on it. B trailer was preloaded up in North Queensland for me. Um, I picked my A trailer up in Brisbane. And I've just hooked up. I'm going straight to Perth. I've never gone direct to Perth. I've always gone to Adelaide. It used to be like this run used to be real annoying because in the beginning, Oh, when I first started with this mob, we used to go down to Adelaide, unload a full combination, reload that full combination for Perth, that would take a day and a half, and then go to Perth. But like now, because we've got freight that goes directly to Perth, we can just go straight there. Tonight I'll get to Cobar. Monday night I think I'll get to Sejuna, I think, which is the start of the Nullarbor, obviously. After that, Norseman, and then after Norseman, I'm around uh, seven and a half hours into Perth. So Sunday, Monday, uh, Tuesday, I should be in Perth. Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night, maybe Wednesday morning, I'm not sure. But we'll see what happens. Oh, we're out for this trip. Seeing as I'm not going to Perth through Adelaide, would be from here, or well, obviously from Brisbane out to here, Gaddon, up through Toowoomba, Gundawindi, Moree, then cut through the back of Moree, then you go out through Collie, Burke and all that, Cobar, which you guys have seen before, I've vlogged, I've vlogged all that before. Uh, Cobar, Broken Hill, then Yunta, and then before, and then after Yunta, like half an hour past Yunta, you actually, instead of going straight towards Adelaide, you actually cut a right and head directly south uh, across to the Port Augusta Highway. So you, you end up going through Peterborough, and, oh, Gladstone, I think, Jamestown, I think those are the towns I go through. I haven't, I haven't been that way for ages, but it basically it cuts straight over the Gawler Ranges and pops you out right um, right before Port Augusta and then you start heading you head north back up to Port Augusta and then cut west um, towards the Nullarbor In the last vlog I showed everyone the northern road train pads Just to give you all an idea of how of the size comparison to Gaddon for anyone that hasn't seen From over the from everyone over the other side that might not have seen Gaddon do a lap around Gaddon here 
I'll show you guys how small it is. This is what I was saying is, there's no space here. Where my trailer was parked, I got lucky, oh, whoever dropped it there, I made the drop to there, got, got lucky that he got a parking spot. From one end of Gaden to the other, it's probably 300 meters, maybe four. Like, so that, what you, what, all those trailers on the left that you guys just saw, there was one end. Literally, there's the roundabout and the highway on the other side of it down there. I'm lucky because it's Sunday, and uh, it's pretty quiet on Sundays here. Everyone's at home for the weekend. You can still probably get, oh, 100 something trailers in here, but it's a tight squeeze. It's just like, it's ridiculous. Usually all that side over there is full. Here's the roundabout on the highway. Come around the corner. This is all dollies. These areas are, are actually like set up for dollies. That's why the yellow line's painted there. Like, just like that, we're already going back towards the other end of it. All right. Light as so, not much of you slowing me down on the way over. Big dog coming in to put up his road train. It's like a glove. That's my trailers need fueling up. I don't think the A trailer does. Nah, that'll be enough. It's on stop start. So that'll be enough to get me oh, to South Australia, basically. Tanks are annoying, the belly tanks. Ones that are right underneath. Because you have to climb up there. And if the latch doesn't work like this one doesn't, you have to sit, sit underneath it and hold the bloody latch. I've had, um, well, breakfast. I've had breakfast in the food warmer down here since like Mill Marin. I got there and realized I was feeling tired because I hadn't eaten, so I'm gonna rip, rip into one of these while I'm driving. And that's about it, really. Uh, my next stop will be Walgett, I think. Yeah. I'm See if we can't fix this bloody wiper. I was due to pull up for a break anyway. Usually, I'd have a break back in Walgett, fueling up, and then go all the way through to Cobar. This side. Blah, 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 blah. This side. And then I'll do this.
then boom, she's open. What I'm gonna do is I'll just turn the key on and then turn the wipers on and then I'll see how it all works. So for some reason, that arm in there that you guys can see that's moving, it's still connected here, but it's just not, it's just not moving this, that's all. Boom. So it ended up being a pretty simple fix. That nut there, so you guys will see it turn when the motor kicks in. It just come a bit loose. I'll just tighten that right back up. Don't know why it would have come loose, but it just, you know, whatever. I hate using shifters. Shifters are the worst things for nuts. All right, that nut there, as tight as I can get it with this. Unfortunately, well, I haven't got the number 12 ring spanner, so I can't get any tighter. And that's the big, and that's the smallest shifter I've got. Big road train going past in the background there. Where is he? This bar here that I use to do things like this now. Um, this bar actually came out of like the very first truck that I drove interstate for the last company I worked for. I had that truck for three or four months before they put me in a big cab and like no one come looking for this bar so I ended up keeping it. But it's literally been the most handy tool that I've, that I've ever had. I hate waking up. Check this cooling level. Now yesterday when I left home, this was choppers. And I'm pretty sure it'll still be choppers. See that? Still, like, that's still full. You're not meant to fill them right up to the top. Still heaps of cooling in that. That's why I'm very confused as to why it's overheating. It's obviously something that's above my pay grade. I don't know much about how trucks work, I just know how to drive them. So I've skipped ahead a bit. I'm just before Broken Hill and the Twin Rest areas. Uh, I'm like literally 5Ks out of Broken Hill. Um, this dirty old thing, it ran out last night. So I'm gonna go in, I've never, I've never bought a logbook out here, but I've gotta go into Broken Hill without my trailer because there's not really anywhere in Broken Hill to park a truck. Um, go in, buy another log book, come back out, hook up to the trailers and keep going. So I'm looking for Bagot Street, Bagot Street, Bagot Street, something like that. That's a kilometre up here on the right. Bit of a random place for a service office. Bagot Street. Alright. It's weird that they've put a government building up here. Oh yeah, I can see it up there. No, I could have brought a double in here. But I don't know if these streets are rated for doubles. Truck zone. Oh, there's literally a truck zone here. <laughs> Damn, I could have bought my trailers in here. That's right. Now with the old, my log books get filthy because I use them as a lap table to eat off. I, I still have to keep that for records. But then, then with the new. If anyone like me is lives in a big city and you don't like waiting in transport lines and you happen to come through Broken Hill and need a, um, need a log book, come get one here. I was waiting for 30 seconds, I think. And then five minutes later, I was out the door with the new log books. Truck drivers, there's literally a truck parking bay right out front. I don't know if you can bring a B double in here, but you'd easily, oh, you'd get a B double onto the street. I just don't know if you can go out the other end, the other end of the street. That's all.
usually I fuel up at the mobile over there um, in the Adelaide to Brisbane vlog uh, that wasn't it was like I don't know a few vlogs ago I, that's where I fueled up just there but I've just come to the Ampole I've just heated lunch up in the food warmer but I'm still hungry so I got some more lunch <laughs> and they make good sandwiches at the Ampole so that'll be me set for a couple of hours there's a quarantine station uh, well, down the road there that's basically every border of South Australia oh, I actually can't remember there being a quarantine station coming across from Melbourne but all the borders of South Australia they have quarantine stations near them like because I've got produce in the back trailer usually it like we'd need something to say that we're delivering it into South Australia but we're not we're taking it to Western Australia so all I'll say when I pull up there someone's staring at me talking to the camera that's all good all, all I'll say when I get to um, the quarantine station I've got bananas in the back trailer but I'm taking them to Perth and they'll just wave me past all right this is the this is the quarantine station Good, I got bananas in the back for Perth. That's it though. Yeah. Alright, All right, thanks mate. Easy as that. Yeah. 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 Especially during the day. If, you, if that's your first drop in the morning, it's alright because that street's empty, but during the day, that, that area is fucked. Yeah. This is giving us the all clear in a few hours. I'll be at, I'll be at the end of the Wilkins Highway anyway. You know when you turn to come towards Gladstone and all that off Port Augusta? Yeah, that one there. There's a parking bay right at the start of the highway there. I'll be there. Oh, it must have a toilet. I don't know. I can't remember. pulled over to tell you guys what all those towns just were so on the other side of those ranges there is Yunta where my last stop was where well, you guys can't see it but the main highway that's just in front of me that's the Port Augusta highway so if I if I go left up there and go back um, and go back I think that's south and that'll take me down to Adelaide but I'm gonna hang a right and go that and go north up to Port Augusta if I just followed the road um, and not come over these ranges through uh, Peterborough, uh, Jamestown, Gladstone, and all that kind of thing. I would have ended up at Gawler and then gone into Adelaide. So it's just like a, instead of going down and around the ranges, so instead of going down and around the ranges to Adelaide, we can just cut straight across. My, my next fuel stop, because I am low, which in all honesty, I made it from Gundawindi up in Queensland all the way down to South Australia to Port Perry here but I'm stopping at a place called Tin Man and then after that I'll just power on through um, I'll just power on through I won't get to Sojourner tonight I'll get somewhere near there alright let's go service centre it's not the safest service centre on the bloody highway um, you have to call it every time you come in, every time you come out of here going in is not too bad because you can see what's behind you you can see what's in front of you 
but like this is a blind corner if you're doing a hundred and coming the other way is a blind corner and there's no there's no run up to the highway it's just straight from the fuel valves or straight onto the highway are you watching car room in here though for a road train and our old mate's using the fuel bells I know he's not plenty of room and then the fuel bells are here facing the highway I need everything there yeah. There, about two and a half grand. I'm not paying the fuel bill. About two and a half grand that cost. E. P double northbound out of Tin Man. Day three of the drive. Yesterday I done something like 1300 k's in 14 hours, which is insane. It might be the biggest drive I've done. When you're getting going from like Brisbane or Perth or something, you've got traffic to deal with. You've got on ramps, off ramps, traffic lights to deal with, things like that. But when you're like, say, coming from Cobar straight out here, you literally park on the highway, go to sleep, wake up, get straight back on the highway, and you're doing 100 all the way until you stop for the night. The plan was, the plan was for me to stop here and um, and go and see the mechanic. But I don't think the truck's actually overheating. I think I think the gauge is faulty. I don't actually think it's hot. So this isn't actually the Nullarbor Plain. The Nullarbor Plain doesn't start till you get to the roadhouse, um, a few hours from here. Between here and Norseman, there's no intersections. It's all highway. It's funny because wherever you go in Australia, there's certain groups of big companies that kind of um, that kind of stay in certain places. 
like one is HPS, so they're a big refrigeration mob that, that runs between uh, Adelaide and Perth. But they've probably got more trucks on this one road than most companies do going around, you know, than most companies do going everywhere else. You've got Diamond Brothers, uh, you've got Oswide, Oswide's huge out here. That you don't really see Oswide in, in, in any other parts of the country. They, they're around. Once you get to the border, it's just, um, you see all the Oswald changeovers, it's crazy. But who else is out here? Oswald, uh, Diamond Bros, HPS. Oh, I just passed our other driver that's, that's going to Perth. I thought he would be way ahead of me, but he's not. Alright, I'm going to call him. Hey, was that you at the BP? Hey, can you hear me? Was that you at the at Sejuna? Yeah, I just Yeah, okay. I'll just come through there. Did you did you pull up there for a for your break, did you? Yeah. So I'm coming up on Nunju. It's the last mobile before bloody Northern. Oh, yeah, it's the last mobile before Northern. Um, Northern's near Perth, where those road train pads are. Um, I don't really need fuel, but I've just got to fuel up anyway. I've only used a quarter of fuel since Tin Man yesterday, so this place goes off on a Friday night. <laughs> the last time I was in here on a Friday night, it was packed full of people. The last SD car ran out of space right as I was coming in off the road. <laughs> anyway, let's fuel up. Our other driver that's heading over to Perth at the same time should catch up to me. He's coming from that direction there. I thought he was. I thought he would have got to the border last night, but he reckons he's not going to get there. He reckons he's not on a rush because he can't do his deliveries till the day after he gets there anyway, so we'll see if he turns up. Yeah, hey, I thought you'd turn up while, while I was filling up. Oh yeah, I was just checking. Yeah, I was just checking. Probably a strip point or later. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll run with you for a while. Yeah, can you get to the Bowser from where I am? What's that? Do you need me to move forward anymore? Ah, uh, yeah, you're alright, mate. Ah, uh, I'll yeah, my trailer's all good. Alright, sweet. Yeah, old mate just turned up while, while I was filling up. Cause he was only like 10 minutes behind me and literally I've been here for 10 minutes so I'll get out have a chat to him and then we'll get on the road. So old mate's got a bit more of a speed limit than I do. This truck only does 99 and he, he does the whole 100 so. So I'm going to let him pull out in front of me. Um, Cause he'll just catch up to me anyway. There's no point in me going in front. What's he waiting for? I can't see, no he's waiting for that. Anything coming in your mirrors? Hello, Vic, how are you, Bill? Alright. Hey, see my balls, Mr. Off by Mayor. Uh, Captain? Is that off the back one? I've got the padlock to your back trailer, too. I forgot to put it back on last week. You are so. <laughs> yeah, I've got the padlock to your back trailer. I forgot to put it back on last week when I had that one. Oh, I got a collection of them now. Yeah, I think we all do. Yeah, you must have been. That's funny why he's breaking. He spent so much money on padlock. He's a Kiwi too, this fella. That's, yeah, so, I give, so we get along pretty well. That's the, that's the start of the metal ball plate, that brown side of there. And the start of the crazy people. <laughs> anyway, I'm not far from the Nullarbor Roadhouse, but we're going to blow straight through then. Our next stop will be the border, which is, uh, oh, I don't know, a couple of hours. Have you got any more than that, nah? While the metal? Yeah. Nah. I like this part of the road. I just passed where I pulled over in um, the last Perth vlog. Because he started his book in Sejuna, he's um, 
he's he's gonna he's gonna leave me behind anyway. Oh, is that my or just on the phone? Nah, nothing important. I'm going to go through the um, the quarantine station now. Hey, um, I've got um, 22 pallets of bananas in the back trailer. Now what's going on? you get in these quarantine stations. Could be a quick one, could be a long one. Don't know. Oh, I'd better just have some lunch while I'm sitting there, honestly. Is that you, Jacques? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. It's hard to tell whether or not you're going to have a good time coming through here. The first time I come, here, come through here with produce, it took me like 45 minutes just to get out the other side of the shed. Alright, got the golden ticket back. Now I'm on my way. There was <laughs> there was one person in there that looked like they were gonna give me a hard time, but lucky someone in there knew that what they were doing. Alright, let's go. One seven hour break away we go. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm moving now. Yeah, I think if that older bird had her way, I would have been there for another hour. This is Euclid Pass. This is the hill that I overtook that road train in the last vlog coming up. But yeah, they, they, all those big mobs, they do their changeovers up the top there or down the bottom here. Three road trains sitting there, and there's three trucks sitting next to it waiting for their trailers to come from the other direction. Around seven hours from Norseman, the BP where I'm going to pull up for the night. Now I've got like I've got like seven and a half hours left on my box. I've got plenty of hours left to get there. So I'm coming up to the descent um, to go down into Perth. This is like the first sign that warns you about it. It's 1k from the sign. It's not really a steep hill, it's just long. And it goes through Resi and there's traffic lights at the bottom. So at the top though, you have to you have to pull into this, this truck bay that's at the top and then stop, reset your gears and then go down. Slowly work my way out. This this hill's like six, seven k long. I think I'm gonna go around this bike. He's making me use my brakes because he's going slower than me. I just gotta wait for a clear. Gotta wait for traffic to clear up in this lane. I won't go up the gear or anything. I'll just cruise around. Him. Part about bringing 
bringing a double over over the side of the country is I don't have to do a dog run up and down this hill. It'd be nuts to buy a house on this hill. Especially all night, there's just trucks going up and down here using their drakes. It's crazy. Almost there. Last turn. The cute LBP is just over here. Oh, what a drive. Three and a half days isn't bad to get over here. If I had a road train, I would have been here. Oh, I probably would have been here. Oh, six or seven hours later. But tomorrow morning will be four days, so I'm basically three and a half days to get over here. I didn't know you could do it in three and a half days, to be honest with you. 